Hi, um, I'm Tobias. I'm here from Bot and Dolly, a creative and technology and robotics studio here in San Francisco. Um, at Bot and Dolly, we have a very passionate team. Um, our team is passionate about art and design, um, passionate about technology, and passionate about the future. But I want to take a second and jump back to the past, to the 70s. Um, uh, you've probably heard of a company called DEC, Digital Equipment Company. Um, uh, its founder, Ken Olson, in 1977, famously stated that there was no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. Uh, it's a great indication of how difficult it was at that moment to see over the horizon and understand the radical change that we would experience over the coming decades. Only a few years later, uh, the founder of a different company had a different vision, and he said um, that he saw a PC on every desk in every home. Through the 70s and the 80s, we crossed a massive uh, uh, threshold in computing, uh, crested a wave of innovation. Uh, between the GUI and the mouse, Xerox Park inventions made computing a tool that was accessible to anyone. Um, our imagination was no longer framed by the command line, and as a result, uh, we live our lives radically different today. In retrospect, that explosion uh, happened in an instant. And we are at that exact moment in robotics, and it will happen even faster. Through the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, um, computing was with us. Um, and robotic technology has been with us for decades as well. But uh, the tools to command the technology are still largely in the domain of the expert. Um, our ability, uh, the non-roboticists of the world, uh, to think about and innovate in this space is only beginning to evolve. At Bot and Dolly, uh, we have a unique DNA and a unique culture. Uh, we are a creative studio composed of artists and engineers. Uh, in a lot of the world, uh, artists in their domain design and engineers in their domain develop. At Bot and Dolly, we mash the two together. Um, and what we found over time in multiplying their force is that there's a powerful friction between the two disciplines. And we've learned to leverage that friction and put it to work as the engine that drives our creative process. In a production environment uh, and driven by the pressure of client schedules, um, it's our job to imagine experiences that combine the digital and physical um, that are just at the edge of plausible and close the gap between plausible and possible. Um, I'm going to take a second and share with you the story of how our relationship with robots got started. Um, you see, one day, several years ago, there was a kind of a jailbreak. And uh, a six-axis industrial arm manufacturing robot broke free from its place in the assembly line and showed up at the door of our creative studio. Um, when it arrived, it was a foreigner in a foreign land. Um, and this robot was a little bit different than the others, maybe a little bit more aspirational about its future, maybe a little bit more poetic. Um, it didn't speak our language. We didn't speak its language. But we had a hunch that what we could do together would be significant and meaningful to the world. So we began to learn, and we began to teach. It showed up with its own story, and the first thing that we did together was tell it. Let's take a look at that. My grandfather was an immigrant, the first of my family to come to this country. They left him waiting in a small room while they argued over his paperwork, how to fill in the blanks, which boxes to check. And when he was quite forgotten, it came to him. I don't know what you'd call it, his muse, his mojo, his raison d'etre, his rapture. And he found that what they always said was wrong. If you looked directly into the light, it wasn't blinding. It brought exquisite clarity and a marvelous depth of field. And when they finally came back and unlocked the door to ask him a few more questions, they found nothing left but a stain on the floor, his pendant, and a slight turbulence in the air. He had slipped the surly bonds of earth, as the poets say. He was no poet, my grandfather, but he knew what he had to do. The tools to tell that story with robotics um, simply didn't exist at the time that we made that piece. Um, so as we do at Bot and Dolly, we uh, designed and built them. Rather than programming the robot uh, by defining points in space, um, we designed and built a system that allowed us to think in terms of performance over time. We taught the robot to speak in the language of film. 
because of that, uh, there's been a lot of focus on us this year um, on account of our deep involvement in the film uh, Gravity. Alfonso Caron's uh, vision for a new kind of cinematic experience was seemingly impossible to achieve, and Warner Brothers was unwilling to spring for 100 million tickets to space. Um, but on account of our tools, we were able to bring it to life. Do it now! Because we were able to translate from uh, the language of the filmmaker to the language of robotics, we were able to upend a long-standing convention. Rather than uh, moving an actor through the world, uh, we literally were able to move a world around an actor using the power of robotics. Um, at that time, the beginning of our work with Gravity, our toolset was just beginning to mature. But let's take a look at the very first test we did for our friends at Warner Brothers. At Bat and Dali, it inspires us to build the tools that enable us to realize our own ideas. It inspires us even more to see those tools out in the wild, enabling thousands of creators to realize their own ideas. But what really inspires us, and what gets us out of bed in the morning, is knowing that in solving these kinds of problems, we're playing a role in enabling us um, much more broadly as humans to put robotics to work in the world in ways that today we are only beginning to imagine. There's a saying. Uh, we shape our tools, and uh, thereafter, our tools shape us. This captures the current state of robotics and its future potential. What was yesterday an unapproachable, complicated machine that could only be operated by an expert is today one that can be spoken to in a language of film. At Bat and Dali, we are looking across domains and identifying the natural languages of creators in all sorts of fields, and we're building the bridges that allow how we think to drive what they do. If you're a basketball player, and you speak basketball, you'll want to speak to a robot in basketball. If you're a chef and you speak cooking, we need to build the tools that allow us to speak to robotics in cooking. It's a powerful approach, and it's been very fruitful for us at Bat and Dali. Let's see some of the projects that um, uh, have come from us putting that approach to work. It's a project called Kinetosphere. Um, it's an experiment in making music by moving the robot through space. People that had never programmed a robot um, were able to change the composition. It's a project that we call Stack. We're turning our robots into star architects and teaching them to think in terms of volume and geometry and changing the shape of walls on our iPad interface with the swipe of a finger. Uh, that's a project straight out of our incubator. It's a system for real-time capture and repeat of human movement. Uh, it allows us to mimic natural motion. The last piece that I want to take a look at is called Box. Um, it's a piece uh, where we employ the five principles of magic to blatantly break the laws of physics and create dimension in the physical world where there is none. Um, many suites of software are harmed in the making of this film. Also, a physical installation that can be experienced in person. Uh, it really explores the boundaries of what's possible in a world where we understand position uh, to the submillimeter.
Today in our studio, um, there's a robot that's building a wall, a robot that's being taught to play the cello, and a robot that's learning to draw. Our robots are thinking in terms of time and notes and geometry and color. And every time we approach the design problem uh, of bringing an experience to life with robotics, we're thinking in terms of what makes our life a more beautiful, uh, more human and richer world, uh, not what makes the technology itself more interesting and useful. I mentioned before that at Bot and Dolly, we're driven by three passions. Um, we're passionate about art and technology. We're passionate about the future. We're deeply attached to a vision of the future uh, that can be a little bit difficult to make out from where we stand today. But every time that we build an interface that allows us to bridge uh, creative expression and um, the capabilities of the technology, we're taking a step toward what might be the equivalent, eventually, of a robot on every desk in every home. It's a world, uh, a future world, where uh, everything around us is alive. Um, combining the power of advanced machines and the power of computing, the power of the cloud. What is static today can be animate and responsive tomorrow. These new bridges improve the design of our own imagination and accelerate our progression toward a world that closes the gap between the digital and the physical. Thank you.